check out this super cool chord substitution trick that I'm going to show you in this video. I recently did a four part mini series on how to play jazz guitar walking bass lines with chords added in at the same time. It's a really good series if you're interested in that topic. But in the second video of that series, um, I got into the weeds a little bit on how to do this walking bass lines and playing chords at the same time over dominant seven flat nine and also over diminished chords and how you can kind of treat those two chords the same way and you kind of get the same result from them. So I wasn't as clear about that as I could have and it caused a little bit of confusion, but then it prompted me to want to make this video, which is just gonna show you how related those two chords are, the dominant seven flat nine chord and the diminished seven chord. This is a very powerful, very awesome concept and it shows how music theory can be overwhelming and confusing and, and challenging almost because everything is so crazy connected. So if we can start to see the connections of these things, uh, that's really how we add our knowledge up over time and, and really can use it uh, to our advantage. So let's dive in and talk about this super cool concept. <music> I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com and on this channel I teach on a wide variety of guitar topics all about helping you increase your overall musicianship skill level, gain more creative control over music, and express yourself more freely. If you're new here, welcome, please subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, let's dive into a screen view here and I'm just gonna show you how cool it is that these two chords, dominant seven flat nine and diminished seven are so related. Okay, so now I wanna show you, and I'm not gonna show you the numbers because we're gonna be switching between these two chords, but we have this structure here that's the dominant seventh chord, one, five, flat seven, and flat three. Here's all I wanna say. If you raise the root of a dominant seventh chord up a half step, any voicing of dominant seventh anywhere, anytime, if you take the root and you bring it up a half step, you have a diminished seven chord shape. You have a diminished seven structure, sound, everything about it is diminished seven. Um, now, you can interpret that, interpret that in many different ways, and we're gonna talk about that uh, next on the list here, but let's just put this to the test more. So this is a diminished, common diminished seven chord shape and came straight from, okay, one note, one half step difference. The root going up a half step made that happen. Um, let's investigate it here. This is another version of dominant seven, another voicing. Here's the root, here's the flat seven, here's the three, here's the five. It's a common voicing. Here's A, so this is A7, A dominant seven. Take the root, bring it up a half step. This is now a diminished seven shape. Now that doesn't mean you're not thinking of it still as some version of A7. That's what we're gonna lead to here in this lesson. We're gonna talk about that. But now just, this is a common diminished chord shape. So this would be B flat. Um, or a sharp diminished seven. This would be the double flat seven, this would be the flat three, and this is the flat five. So let's do another version of A7 here. Uh, we'll do root, we'll do five, we'll do flat seven, we'll do three. Okay, that's A7 right there, also a dominant seven shape. Take the root up. Ah, here's another diminished seven shape. This is the root, this is the flat five, etc. You get the point. We could take any voicing of, of dominant seven and raise the root up a half step and you get a voicing of diminished seven. So now next point is, I'll just make this, this is a, a first inversion, A7, this is the third, this is the flat seven, this is the root, this is the five. Um, and you don't need to have all that memorized. I just want you to take these big points away, these big takeaways. This first thing being any dominant seventh chord, raise the root up a half step. Here's the root, then you have a diminished seven chord shape. Now we already might have noticed something here interesting that shape is the same one that we did before so my next point is that diminished seven is a symmetrical chord structure it is symmetrical because it is built completely on minor thirds on flat three so if we just take let's take e here this root and go flat three up flat three up flat three up you can't play all those on the guitar but for our purposes we see oh that's a minor third distance minor third distance minor third distance um if you go up another minor third distance which would be that because of the tuning of the guitar that's e again right so to get back again and just keep going you have minor thirds all the way forever so because of that this chord is extremely interesting and it it is symmetrical so Therefore, every shape of diminished seven, 
sometimes I say it inverts to itself. Every shape inverts to itself. So the point being here, here is one of the shapes that we had. And then we found also this shape here. Oh, they're the same shape. And they're inversions of each other three frets away or a minor third away. So you'll hear this sound a lot where you play this shape, go up a minor third or go up three frets and you play that shape, go up another three frets, you play that shape and you hear this kind of old horror movie soundtrack kind of sound. Give it a try, even right now, even though I'm not playing you the example here, you'll have heard that a million times. People use it in their improvisations and stuff. And part of this video is for me to help you see how it can be utilized and used um, even when we're just playing over normal dominant seventh chords. But that's the next point is just that diminished seven is a symmetrical chord structure. So every voicing, every voicing of it, when you invert it, it is actually just the same physical chord shape. So it's actually quite handy and powerful on the guitar to have that down. We could take any um, dominant seventh chord. Here's a flat seven, three, five, one of a seven again, take the root, bring it up. It's that same shape again on the top four strings. If you take any voicing of dominant seven, here's another dominant seven shape right here. And this is the five, this is the root, this is the, this is the three, and this is the flat seven. Here's the root, bring it up. Oh my gosh, it's the same one again. So it takes so much training to work on a lot of physical shapes of chords like dominant seven. You have to memorize four different shapes if you want all the inversions along these top four strings. Uh, but you find the root on each one and it just always every time turns into this. It's really cool. We already did this one here. That's A7. Take the root, bring it up. We did this one already down an octave. That's A7. Take the root, bring it up. Wow. Same shape, same shape, same shape all over the place. Okay. So just to drive that point home, how cool that is. Um, let me do it on the middle four strings here now. So we did this already and we see that, okay, that's a common diminished chord structure shape. I'm going to make a first inversion, A7 chord here. This is three, this is flat seven, this is the root, and this is five. Here's the root. And by the way, again, you know, I'm throwing those labels out there. Don't stress about that. I don't want to show the numbers right now because it would make it a little more hectic looking. But um, even if you don't know that stuff yet, when I fly through some information sometimes, definitely just take it as like, oh, okay, that's going to be helpful to slowly start to learn and study and, and get that figured out. The big takeaway again is if you find the root and let yourself take as much time as you need to find it, if you do need to, you bring the root up and voila, you have the diminished chord shape. Okay, so let's just do it on the next inversion. Here's the next inversion of, on these middle four strings of A7, here's five, Here's one, here's three, and here's flat seven. Okay, where's the root? You take your time, you find it. This is the root. Wow, same shape again. And isn't it interesting how it's just not obvious? Like this just looks like totally its own thing. Right? This is a very visual, weird kind of puzzle um, that then as soon as you bring that one note up, it has to be like, oh my gosh, familiar, right? In terms of where your fingers go and the sound and everything. So, um, so that is just very cool. Obviously we could do the same thing on any voicing of dominant seven. That's off the sixth string. This is five. This is three. This is flat seven. This is the root, bring the root up. And then you have this diminished seven voicing that we talked about before. Okay. That point is clear now, but let's look at it from a couple angles to really take advantage of it. That alone is just cool to know, but let's look at it from a few perspectives. Cause I think there's a way that is easier to explore it. So far, if you wanted to explore that, you'd say, Ooh, I better learn a bunch of voicings of dominant seven. And really, even if you just know one, this is cool to know, but you know, then also how, what do you use it for? <clears throat> we need to talk about really what the, what the use is. And also that's a lot of work to learn different voicings of dominant seven. So the next thing I want to do is just invert that process or just flip it on its head and to say, well, we found this diminished seven uh, voicing. And then instead of instead of starting with the dominant seven and bringing the root up, well, we can have this conclusion that if you bring any chord tone of diminished seven down a half step, you have an inversion of dominant seven. Well, that's just freaking cool. That is, just, this is just like a little puzzle. So like any of these, and once we know it's, it's diminished seven, any of these go down one half step, you have a voicing of dominant seven. And you're going to find some voicings you may have never played before. So let me just recommend this to you. Learn this voicing of diminished seven off the sixth string. Learn this voicing of diminished seven off 
the fifth string and learn this voicing of diminished seven off the fourth string, just three. And then remember, they invert to themselves. Like if you go up three frets from this and you play this same shape off of this note instead, you're playing the, you know, all four shapes of diminished seven along this, these four strings, same shape, same shape over and over. Same with these, we saw that, same with these, right? So if you wanted to play the next inversion of this, you just go down three frets and make that, oops, you make that same shape like that. So these are the exact same chord. These have the exact same notes in them. The only thing that's different is the voicing, the order of the notes. So the same pitches, same chord tones, everything. Okay, so, whoa, this is gonna be cool. Let's take this, bring it down a half step. You have dominant seven now, okay? Now, which dominant seven? Okay, that's okay if that's confusing, but you have dominant seven. This happens to be flat seven on the bottom. That's three, that's five, and that's the root. Um, so if you don't know what it is yet, that's okay. I just want you to know that that's how you could find some very interesting voicings. Um, and actually the way that you can tell is simply just say whatever you brought down, that's now the root, right? Then you can figure it out from there. But how often do we play dominant seven with the flat seven on the bottom? It's actually very cool and very palatable depending on where you're going, right? If you resolve this down a half step to another chord shape, it could sound just really cool. So, um, oh, well, let's do another one then. Let's do all of them. This is the one we came to before. You bring this down a half step, now that's the root. Okay, that's the five, that's the flat seven. Okay, cool, that's the three on the bottom. So don't let this overwhelm you. I want it to just be kind of like, a, hmm, interesting, and, and just take walk away even with a general idea of this being an interesting idea. Let's move this down a half step and we get this shape. This That is now the root. Because it's the one we brought down, it's the root. Here's the five, root, that's the three. Okay, if you start to see some of these relationships, that's helpful, one to three, that's always gonna be one and three on any strings that aren't these two strings. Um, then that's the flat seven. Cool. Well, let's bring this one down. And now we have that original shape that we have. So, whoa, a way to find very quickly all of your inversion shapes for dominant seven by just starting with this thing that, you know, first diminish seven and bring any of them down. So we don't need to do all of them, but here's that other shape I'm recommending. And it doesn't matter what route we're on because it's going to change so much. We already did this. That is the... Um, root position dominant seven but what if you bring this down oh cool we just brought that down that's the root here's five here's three here's flat seven that is a dominant seven shape bring this down oh wow there's another dominant seven shape this is three this is flat seven this is the root this is the five and lastly bring this down oh dominant seven shape now that is the root right so you give each one a turn at being the note that goes down and becomes the root and you get all four inversion shapes and I'm just showing you, you know, off top four strings, middle four strings, and then this type of voicing that is the um, six string and then skipping the A string. But any voicing at all that is dominant seven, the same thing will be possible. So here is the exciting conclusion. And that is that if they are this related, if diminished seven and dominant seven are this related, that you can actually use dominant seven uh, superimposed, I'm sorry, I wrote this wrong and I was looking at it. You can use diminished seven, these are my notes here. You can use diminished seven superimposed over any dominant seventh chord, okay? You can use diminished seven shape superimposed over any dominant seventh chord. So here's how I would explain this. We know that you can turn the dominant seventh chord into a diminished chord by raising up the root. That means that the diminished chord shape can be thought of as being built off of every chord tone of a dominant seventh chord except for the root and instead you say flat nine okay so if that's a little confusing let's start with talking over here with these other ones you can this if this is still dominant seven then that would be flat nine this would be flat seven this would be three and this would be five. Oh, okay and all those shapes invert to each other so just trust me on this where we're going here if you play a diminished shape i say off of the flat seven or off of the three or off the five by like saying, <clears throat> I'm thinking of those as the lowest note. You'll see what I mean in one sec. Then you have um, essentially a version of dominant seventh chord that is a flat nine. So you're interpreting dominant seventh chord with a flat nine by using the diminished chord shape. People do this all the time. It's very common in jazz, but very common in just orchestration and, and anything. So you're, you're thinking of that diminished structure. It's functioning as dominant seven still, 
but you are utilizing that symmetry of that chord over the dominant seventh chord. So I think this will help make sense of it more. But first, <clears throat> first we do just need to know that if we're st if we're not thinking of it as its own diminished seven chord, it is still dominant seven where this is the root, and you just added this note or replaced it. But the root's still there even if you're not playing it, and this is flat nine. Okay, so that's what we need to understand. This is a dominant seventh chord flat nine. You obviously can't play these at once, but if that's there, that's the root flat nine and then everything else, flat seven, three, and five. Okay, so here's what I mean. If this is A, and this is the third of A, and this is the fifth of A, and this is the flat seven of A, and this is the root again of A there, um, the way, and here's flat seven over here, and here's three over here, okay? Um, I'm going to add the numbers in now, because this will be this will be helpful, whoops. I'm gonna press, press root, okay, now we can see the root. Um, so now we're thinking very much, these are all chord tones of A7, root, flat seven, three, flat seven, five, one, three, all that stuff. Okay, if you play a diminished structure shape off of any of these that aren't the root, then you have a dominant seventh chord, flat nine interpretation. Okay, so let's do, I'm gonna do this. Okay, so we have another fretboard here. So even just take that away, and even with this. So, okay, we know that we need to raise the two up. Now you can play diminished seven chord shape off of the two. This is A7 flat nine with that flat nine on the bottom, flat two and flat nine are the same thing. Okay, what if you play off the three and you just play the shape that you know? Oh, look what we have. We have the third of A, we have the flat seven of A, we have the flat two, which is flat nine as a chord tone, and five, so you're playing that shape. Now here's where it really gets logical. And if you do this on the guitar, it'll it'll make a lot of sense. I played off of this three here. Now what if we play off of this five here, okay? You play just that same shape you know, whoops. And there it is again, but they're flipped around. The notes are flipped around. Before we had three flat seven, flat nine, five, same shape up, okay? So you're playing a diminished structure off of the five of A. Here's the root. Here's the five. So you're seeing the five, you say, okay, so if you play that structure, that diminished shape, and your chord currently in the song, in the music, in your improvisation, whatever you're doing is A7, well, you have just now done a voicing of A7 by adding the flat nine. Adds more tension. You can add that anytime. It doesn't have to be asked for on a lead sheet even. You can just add it if you want. Um, so you could go between this voicing and that voicing kind of scooting shifting your hands up, all same fingering, and play both of those during a moment where A7 is the chord. Um, so if you play off of the flat seven, same thing. Look at what we're getting. We're getting the third of the chord, the fifth of the chord, the flat nine of the chord, the flat seven of the chord, right? So if you play off the seven over here, and you play your shape that I said to learn, here's flat seven, you're playing the shape, diminished shape off of flat seven, then you get that. Okay, so I know that's a little, that could be a little confusing. You know, watch it again if you need to, but um, the point is they, you can use a diminished seven chord structure to interpret um, any dominant seventh chord as dominant seven flat nine. And, and so especially if the chord is supposed to be dominant seven flat nine, oh my gosh, definitely use this and you'll get all these instant voicings. You'll have all these instant voicings uh, all these inversions, all these movable, interactive, uh, fluid chord shapes to play over that dominant seven flat nine. I hope that's making sense. Just let me know if you have questions in the comments. Let's jump to the guitar view, and I'm going to demonstrate basically that last thing that I just said, where we're going to take A7 and play uh, diminished seven shapes over it. We're actually going to use a chord progression, A7 to D minor, and we're going to treat that A7 as A7 flat nine, and we're going to use all those diminished shapes over it and it is going to sound beautiful. So I'll see you in that guitar view in one sec. All right, so I just wanna show you here now, if we have this A7 chord that we've been using in the example on the screen there, just a dominant seven, and let's say this, that's gonna to resolve to D minor. So fifth position, D minor there. Okay, now let's say this is A dominant seven flat nine, or we're gonna just turn it into A dominant seven flat nine if it's not already. And here is the three of A7. And I'm gonna make that diminished shape just off the three. That's why I say off the three. Okay, now that is our voicing, just so you can hear it now. Okay, A7 
off the three, diminished, here's the five, diminished shape off the five. Again, these are the same physical shape, okay? Here's the flat seven of A. Oh, same shape. Here is the flat nine of A, same shape. Okay, so if the flat seven is here, which it is, then that top four string shape of diminished seven, you can play that there. Here's the root, here's flat nine. Okay, so this is kind of nice because I can play the open A and then play. Okay, off the five. Now listen to how this resolves. Oh, resolves to D minor. Here's diminished seven shape off the three of A7 resolving to D minor. Just sounds so targeted. Okay, so if we have like a measure of each, nice and slow, and D minor. Now I'm gonna throw that uh, diminished seven shape. Same progression. Still just thinking A7. Okay, I'll do a little more. That's D minor there. Okay, that was a different voicing of D minor, D minor 7, but don't worry about that. We can just use this. And these two surrounding it just target it so beautifully. So that's all I wanted to show you just on the guitar to hear it, to see the physical shapes, and just try that for yourself. Just A7. You can even just use A7 here, open A7. And then here's the 3 of A7. Play that, that diminished shape. Here's the 5 of A7. Play that same diminished shape and then resolve to D minor. Just at least that play with and then uh, try to find a couple other spots for it as well and just have fun with it. I think it's a super cool concept. Hey, if you want to study more theory stuff, more mapping out the fretboard, more control over your music, definitely grab my free chord chart called Chords with Color. It's super cool, shows a lot of the theory of the chords, both where they exist in keys as well as the chord tone theory. Tons of ways to use this chord chart and just hear some amazing sounds coming out of your own playing while you're playing around with it. You can grab that with the link in the top of the description totally free hope you enjoy playing with it I post a new video lesson every week thanks for watching take care and happy practicing